my goodness, I am tired and it is late. Uh, but, um, yeah, figured, you know, I got to, uh, you know. Anyway, it's, um, it's very late. It's about 2 a.m., which honestly is early for what I've been doing, but, um, at least earlier in the week. But, uh, yeah, so, um, it's late. I, I, I did a decent amount of stuff today. Um, pertaining to uh, getting things ready. I'm uh, planning on going in about two hours to the, um, the flea market with, uh, with my mom. Um, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but uh, I'm going to try. I might end up napping in the, in the car while... Uh, after after I sell a couple things, but um, yeah, I that's my my goal at least here. Um, and maybe I'll close my eyes while we while we drive, something like that. But um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be kind of a uh, rough day tomorrow. <laughs> um, we usually stay at the flea. Uh, right until about 11 in the morning, 11, between 11 and 12, we usually leave, and, um, uh, after that, you know, I'll come home, and then, I'll, uh, hopefully get a couple hours rest, but then the Browns come on at, uh, I think something like 4.15, and I want to watch that. That should be a good game. I think they're playing the Colts. So that should be a good game, and I'd like to see it, um, so I don't want to sleep. Um, oh, and then also tomorrow, I want to um, head up possibly to the Goodwill um, and see if I can do some shopping for some... Uh, uh, a couple more, or maybe one or two pairs of pants, and then maybe um, one polo that fits me a little bit better. Because um, I have a polo now, but um, I have a, a few, but they're very small. For, for, the, for the new job, I need some, um, some, some uh, better fitting clothes. Because I have a, my pair of black jeans, and I have some polos, but they don't fit that well. The jeans are a little too tight for for working, and um, the polos are a little too short. So, you know, if I'm reaching up to grab something, um, you know, I don't want to have the bottom of my stomach, you know, show or whatever. So, uh, sorry if I sound, like, down or sad. I'm not particularly down or sad. I'm just tired. Um... My my sleep has been messed up for a little bit now, and uh, that'll affect you. It, it really will, so make sure to get your sleep. Uh, anyway, guys, um, that's going to be about it. Um, tell me, tell me uh, what the first, um, oh, goodness, the first sport you ever played was, if you ever, ever played a sport. I imagine everyone's played a sport at least once in their lives. Even if you were forced to play it in, like, kindergarten, you've played a sport. So what was the first sport you ever had to play? The first one I can remember is the stupid game where um, you would... I mean, it was kind of fun, but it was kind of silly at the same time. My gym teacher, when I was in kindergarten, like, in first grade, she was just a very, very mean old lady. Um... But anyway, we, uh, so it, you grab the little, what do you call it, like a tarp? I don't know if it's a tarp, but, um, the little, it, it almost looks like a little, uh, I don't know what, what you call it. Every, everybody gets on an end, it's, um, everyone gets on an end of this big cloth, like, rainbow-y colored thing, and everyone goes, and lifts it up, and what you do is you get under it, and you, like, sit on it, and everyone's like sitting there and they're just like, yay, this is fun. And it creates a big like dome with the cloth tarp thing. 
really interesting concept. I don't know why that was a thing we did. Really don't know why. But uh, it, it was a thing. That's the first, I don't know if you call that a sport, but that's like the first physical activity I can remember doing. Uh, I remember n not being able to jump rope. I remember that. And then I remember in like second and third grade, I got a little bit into basketball. But like I wasn't one of the cool kids, so I didn't really get to play like uh, much in like teams, at least in elementary school. It was mostly just uh, I would shoot around when I could, and then occasionally I would get on a team. Uh, not that I was like bullied. By everybody, I just was shy and I didn't assert myself into uh, like games and stuff like that, which I, I guess you should you probably have to do. You kind of have to be extroverted in that way. And back then, I definitely was not, so um, I I didn't do much. I played a lot of Pokemon at recess. Um, you know, I, I hung out with Jack starting in like second grade is when I met him. Second grade was like the turnaround. Kindergarten and first grade just just kind of sucked. Especially, my kindergarten teacher was nice, but my first grade teacher was um, just kind of like, a, again, like a kind of a mean old lady, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I didn't particularly enjoy kindergarten and first grade. Second grade, I had a really nice teacher named Mrs. I can't name her name because uh, that would be, uh, you know, you know, we should probably keep that private, but Mrs. I can't name her name because you should probably keep that private, was a very nice teacher, um, my second grade teacher, uh, like very, like, um, heart of gold, heart of gold kind of person, and, uh, we actually played Webkins, we had, like, Webkins, like, class Webkins, and we would log in and, like, play Webkins in class sometimes. And that, that was just, that was awesome. I just, second grade was a good time. Second grade is also, I believe, when um, Pokemon Diamond came out. Pokemon Diamond, Pokemon Pearl. It would have been 2006, 2007. Yeah, it would have been, it would have been about second grade. And um, yeah, that's when I, I met a few more friends that liked Pokemon. Um, I can re remember, I mean, I guess I can just say first names. Um, there was Cole and Logan, um, a couple others who have very unique names that I probably shouldn't say. Um, yeah, so I started to meet friends and play Pokemon, and uh, that was fun. That was fun. I remember Logan, uh, he had action replay, and... Uh, I couldn't play, or I could not beat for the life of me, the Final Four, or the Elite Four. Um, I think I, I got caught either on Cynthia, I'm pretty sure it was Cynthia, or the one before Cynthia. But like by the time I got to to uh, Cynthia, I just, I had nothing, I had nothing left. Um, and obviously, you know, I did the thing where you level up your starter, and your starter is like level 65, and the rest of your team is like level 20. But, uh, or like you have the legendaries or whatever. So, I, I yeah, I probably had Empoleon and, um, like M Mesprit, um, Yuxi, and Azelf? Azor? I think it's Azelf. Azelf. So, I probably had those three, or probably not Mesprit, because didn't Mesprit teleport around the map? So, I probably had Azelf and Yuxi and Dialga and Empoleon. And the legendaries were not leveled up at all. It's basically Empoleon and some subpar legendaries. I mean, Diagla could, you know, help you with the first fight, but then, man, it was... Man, if you didn't have a semi-competitive team, or at least, you know, a balanced team of, you know, five or six um, level level 60s, like, you, you were... Cynthia was going to clap those cheeks, and, like, there was nothing you could do about it. Um, so, it was nice enough to give me his action replay, or, no, he didn't give it to me because I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but he, he did action replay for me, 
and he got me, I think, like a level 80 Venusaur for some reason. <laughs> and, like, uh, I'm pretty sure that's all I really needed to get myself over the hump was that, that level 80 Venusaur. It might have been level 100, I can't remember. It was one of those two. It was a very high level. Um, and then uh, he also got me a bunch of, like, the legendaries, like Darkrai and... Uh, Pretty sure he got me Arceus, but I don't think I used those for... I think he actually got those for me at a different time. I think initially he got me the, the very high level Venusaur. And then he... Uh, and then I beat the Elite Four with with the help of that. And then I think later I came back and I was like, yo, give me the good shit. And so he got me Arceus and Darkrai. And uh, I think there was a really high level Mew in there. And like, you know, a bunch of Master Balls and just all the cool stuff. Uh, Cresselia, well, I think you can get Cresselia pretty easily in-game. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was cool. Man, I, Pokemon Diamond, um, I don't talk about it enough, but man, that game was really important to me. Like, I talk about Paper Mario teaching me how to read. And, you know, I talk about, you know, that was like a, a, a turning point game you know, in, in my in my development as both somebody who plays games and as a person. Um, and, you know, uh, how games how games can affect you in real life. Paper Mario wasn't, a, you know, a text-based, or not text-based, but a text-heavy RPG. I basically, I, I, I was, like, motivated to, like, kind of learn how to read because I would ask my parents, hey, read that to me. And that was kind of helped me learn how to read, and I was kind of um, accelerated in terms of reading, I think, because I played those games when I was so young. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I talk about Paper Mario a lot, but Pokemon Diamond, I, I honestly feel like the fact that I bought Pokemon Diamond on launch day, 2006, after I saw those ads with the cute new uh, penguin Pokemon named Piplup, um, you know, I got, I got it on, on, uh, on launch day and, you know, I brought it to school and other people from school had it or they were getting it the next day. And then I, I'm, that was like when I started to realize that, that, you know, being friends with people and being, um, willing that, that I saw the value in, in, um, you know, group like activity, like, you know, playing games together, you know, playing basketball on teams, uh, just, just hanging out with people, you know, hanging out and, and, and battling Pokemon with, you know, Cole and, and, um, the other, you know, handful of kids that, that had Pokemon Diamond and played it a lot. Um, you know, we would all bring our DSs to school and play. And I think that was, like, the first time that I really started to value that part of interaction. And there was still plenty of times where I just, you know, played by myself. You know, played Diamond by myself. Or, you know, just, um, I used to hang. We had, like, a little tube. Like, a little play, I don't know what it, things you can climb around in. And or I, there was, like, an abacus for some reason. I don't know. Public school uh, playgrounds are, are weird, strange places, but um, yeah, so I, next to the abacus was this little tube, and like, um, I would, uh, a lot of people would like go in the tube, and like, um, well, not, not a lot of people, but a, a couple people would, but I, I like to sit in the tube, like at recess, and just hang there, and I think I probably brought my DS in there and played too, because it would help me, um, you know, it was totally shaded, so it would it would help with glare. So, you know, there was plenty of times where I did that, and that's kind of like an isolated activity. But And then, you know, <clears throat> fourth grade, I started to get out of my shell a little bit more. <clears throat> but then fifth grade with Mrs. Or Mrs. I shouldn't have said that. Mrs. Another Lady, another Austin Lady that I can't say her name. Um, fifth grade with her was uh, the the biggest turning turning point. After that, it was basically, you know, I I was certainly still shy, and I was certainly still introverted in school up until probably, 
high school, sophomore, junior, senior year of high school, those three years is when I actually started to be as out of my shell relatively as I am now. Um, but, like, fifth grade was, like, the turning point where I was like, okay, I can hang out with, you know, I can, like, you know, have friends and, um, you know, hang out, you know. I mean, I, I, I had Jack, which, Jack and I hung out for some of them, like, second grade on, but, um, you know, I had other, other friends that would come over in fifth grade. And fifth grade, too, you kind of had to be extroverted because K through five or K through four for me was at, you know, small elementary school. My, 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 um, city had, uh, four elementary schools. And then after you got out of fourth grade, you went to fifth grade and sixth grade at, uh, an intermediate school. Um, and so all of the, those four elementary schools combined and went to this intermediate school. So you were with the kids that you knew from um, elementary school, but then you were with kids that were from three other elementary schools that you generally didn't know, unless, you know, your parents had connections or whatever. So that being like, so basically three out of every four people you didn't know when you got there, which, um, which you really don't experience any, uh, again, all the way through school. I never really experienced that. I mean, unless you count, you know, going to high school where... You, you know, probably didn't know the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, like, when you were freshmen, but that doesn't really count. I'm talking, like, just your grade, you know, moving up a grade, three out of four people, you didn't know. It was, um, so that kind of forced you to, like, get to know people, and cause then you would just be even more isolated, whereas, like, you know, everyone else is making friends with the kids from, you know, school A and school B, you know, you're in school C, and, you know, you're just kind of getting left behind, but anyway. How the hell did I get onto that? <laughs> oh my goodness, I am wasting so much time right now. I need to go in and shower. Just like freshen up a little bit. Oh my god. Oh, that's what I was saying. Jesus. Pokemon Diamond. Yeah, I think... Wait, no, I already, I already hit that. I already hit that topic. Yeah, Pokemon Diamond was important to me. Because it, it started to bring me out of my shell. And get, you know have group activities with, with other friends, you know, which was fun. So, yeah. Paper Mario, Pokemon Diamond. Those are probably the, the two most important ones that I can think of. I think. I mean, you know, I sunk a lot of hours into Fallout in, like, 2015, but... I mean, was that crucial to my development? No. I just really, really enjoyed that game. Um, and, I mean, probably throw in Final Fantasy 4, just because that was the first Final Fantasy I played, and that introduced me to Umatsu's work, which inspired me to become a composer. So, yeah, important games. Anyway, I'm done rambling. I hope you guys had a good day, and, um, yeah, I hope to see you back here. Tomorrow, which is in an hour and a half, basically. Jesus, I am going to be fucked up. <laughs> Goodbye.